Well, speaking of being, you know, backstage somewhere, you know, and meeting an artist and, you know, exchanging that whole vibe and just saying, hey, man, we should get together. Tupac Shakur was one of the, you know, biggest, you know, situations that I can speak of that I'm so honored to have been a part of that and just been in the right place at the right time. I actually was invited by my boy, who was a mutual friend of Tupac's, to come down to the How Do You Want It video shoot. And Casey and Jojo were there and they were singing on the song chorus, How Do You Want It? And, uh, you know, there was all these, porn actresses and I mean, I mean it's just like python snakes and they just had some really wild stuff going on at this video shoot but I ended up coming into the RV and um, Pac was there and that was my first time meeting Pac and he was just like man you know let me hear some beats man and I played him some beats and he started freestyling to some of my beats and uh, it's just incredible to just see such a, a successful dude who had such a um, thuggish sort of uh, persona but be so cool. Like if you were on his side, if you were his people, he looked out for you. He'd be like, no, that's my man, John B. Make sure, you know, he's good or whatever. And that's where me and Casey and Jojo met for the first time, but also Johnny J, the producer of the track for Are You Still Down? God rest his soul, as well as Tupac. Um, he died a couple years ago, um, a couple years back now. And um, we just, every time I step on stage and I think about what it was like to be in the studio, finally with Pac and Johnny J and making these records, you know, it just was such an honor, man. It was two weeks before Tupac passed away. The whole process of making the song was like maybe three or four hours long. It was just like, it was really fast. I mean, I didn't even have enough time to like either really get used to hearing the song before my man got, you know, his life got taken. So um, it was sort of like this gift and this curse at the same time, because here I am, you know, all excited about having a song with Tupac Shakur and he's not alive anymore to even vouch for me or say, yo, this is a dope record, you know? And I just didn't feel all the way solid about releasing something when someone had just passed, you know? And uh, it was definitely like a catch-22 for me, but the, the record got leaked um, and it started to pick up and people started asking me, so you work with Tupac, you know? Did you really work with him? And I was like, yeah, man, like, I'm blessed to be able to say I did work with him. I did shake his hand, did, you know? We, we talked about the relationships that we were, you know, that we've been through. And, you know, we were talking about hitting your ex up, like, are you still down? Do you still, you know what I mean? You still think about, because back then I was probably 20, 21, 22. So at that point, I'm talking back to like my first, you know, my first love and all that, you know, and I think he was as well. Like we were talking about, we didn't say any names particularly, but, you know, getting into all that, that deep stuff. You know what's really what, what made me know that I was in the right place and that I was comfortable and I didn't feel like all that nervousness was that um, the camaraderie was there. Like he, he would make sure there was like 40 people from Death Row Records, like all just coming in and everybody's, you know, drinking Hennessy and, you know, the smoke in the air. And it's just like, you know, this very thick atmosphere inside there. So, but everybody's paying attention, listening to what we're doing. But as I go into the vocal booth, new people come into the studio and Pac was like, what's up, man? And then they kind of like chilling and they're just like, you know, who, who the white boy in the, in the booth right there? You know what I mean? And he's like, that's my man, John B, man. You don't know who that is? That's John B, you know? Just so he big me up like that. It was huge, man. I'll never forget it, you know? I just, I mean, I didn't want to leave, you know? I, I ended up being able to be a, a witness to him actually recording to live and die in LA, like right there. Like he basically said, come on with me. And I walked over to the, to the other studio because we were in this studio and, he was over here recording another record at the same time because he used to record like three records a day so anyway he starts to play the, the first track that he did which is like the first the first layer of his vocal because he would always double track his vocals and then he went right on top of that track that's recorded he went in the booth and i mean it was like one take he just did did it again no mistakes nothing and that's the song to live and die in la featuring uh, val young who was, uh, she was there as well to live and die in LA. You know, she's so awesome and she's just, you know, she knows like, um, we were both sitting there just like, really? Like, <laughs> you know, this is it's amazing. So yeah, that was a moment for sure. So he goes, uh-uh, man, ain't no copies coming out of here. So that's how fast I turned and looked at him. Like, who was he talking to? Because I'm, we in my session. Being able to make music at home and not even really going to the studio. So what winded up happening, I told everybody, fuck y'all, I quit. But I was at home 
writing music on my laptop every night, every day. They're trying to merge hip hop and R&B together and, and not keep them as separate entities. So we got to watch out for that because I don't want us to fade out like, you know, like something like disco. A race conversation is not a problem of talking about white, black. It's a problem of talking, is still talking about race where race is a fake concept that doesn't exist.